time once again for the Real People Multi Games Fallout Terry Mega Tournament. We're playing 7x7 seven seven Ages, a uh, part of the pole play, in fact, probably the entirety of the pole play of the tournament. Um, it's a long one, it's a big long one. Those of you who have made it this far uh, are definitely aware of that. Um, and I just want to say a few words about that as, as maybe some advice for those of you who may be uh, deciding to play some big long epic game in the future that takes more than one month. Um, a fairly steady play. I've, I've done it m almost every day. There's been a few days where I haven't. Um, more days than I've played more days than I haven't played days. Anyway, but uh, not for, not for it's not like I play a whole day. You know, I play in like an hour and a half or something. That's about all the free time I have for it. Um, but I'm having more free time now, where I don't have to play the game, and that's that's my point. Um, so when you play a big long game, oftentimes, at least for me, and I'm a human, and I feel like humans aren't that different when you get down to it. Um, and I've noticed this trait in others too, so I don't think I'm unique in this regard. Uh, when you when you start something, you have more enthusiasm. I know I note this when people start jobs; they have more excitement for their job. They're willing to put more into it. They're willing to deal with more, uh, perhaps inconvenience, um, because they have this this energy of of the new. They have that springtime vim and vigor and go. Um, but then as time goes on, they get tired, uh, and that's kind of balanced out. The the lack of energy they have to put towards the job or whatever it is is balanced out by ease because they start to understand their job more and so it takes less less um, mental energy to learn the language per se because you already know it. Um, so my advice I guess is if you're going to do a big long epic game have player elimination it's great because as the game goes on and you start to get a little more weary um, you lose lose players which cuts down on the complexity and allows your brain to just kind of do other things. So there's some help from me to you. And the Mechanical Marvel is helping Cowboy. If you recall, the Mechanical Marvel was what let Milky buy uh, these ships of the line early. Um, and they're letting Cowboy's Plains Americans buy these units that he's been trading so vigorously to get early. Um, he was a bit limited in the number of spaces he could produce in, because he can't build buildings, but he now has some, some stronger forces. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does with those, if he's going to take them over, if he's going to just play a defensive game, or if he's just going to use them to spread out, or if he's going to come down and attack um, uh, a run down there. We'll have to see. A lot of production this turn, actually, which was fun. The Japanese, they bring in some serious money. Their ability to urbanize really... Um, Let's them get a lot of cities down, and that that helps, obviously, you know, because uh, cities give you more money. Where else did we see production? Um, over here, the the assassins they they outfitted. There are two assassins. They have a cowboy here, Red River Roy, and a dragon queen. So they have some weapons. So I I think Milky's going to send them out to do some assassinating here soon. Fun. As seems to be becoming typical, the trade in progress phase has been very busy. I think pretty much everyone traded in progress this turn. Um, Cowboy, since he was freed up due to that mechanical marvel, he didn't have to worry about the Plains Americans so much anymore, just bumping them up. He uh, traded again with the Phoenicians. He had held off for a while, even though he scores on progress with them. Um, if you recall, he was this progress marker here was the leader for a long time, and the one that we were wondering when it would trip up the um, trip the switch to for the next elimination. Um, he's now ahead again, not because of just his progress. He, he, he had progressed so that he was tied with the Harappans, um, but also because runs of Egyptians traded with him as well. Um, which is a pretty clever play on her part to, to bump the Phoenicians up. Cowboy's not really so much of a uh, uh, a problem for her as Giraffe is, because she's the next highest one. Her her Romans have really gone flying. They got um, kind of helps to be be further back or not as much of a threat because people will trade with you more. They got two trades that turn, which was which was nice. Um, any other trading in progress? I guess Flush didn't trade in progress, uh, and neither did Milky. I said you know just like with the production, I said a lot of people did it, and it was three, three out of five. So a majority in both cases, but I wouldn't say most. 
Melky's Finns have just won a decisive victory over the Russians in Muscovy there. Uh, so the Russians are out of the game. And now in this case, she's not going to get any compensation for these cards because she didn't discard the Empire. They just got destroyed. So those are going to go away. Actually, he has first dibs on them. He can take one of them because he has two points. I think he'll take that one and discard that one. They were just kind of an uh, annoyance, weren't they? Yes. Ren just kind of put them there to bother him. And then finally, he just got sick of it and he got rid of them. Cowboys Han have used treachery um, to push their way over to the northeast coast here uh, in Korea. They, uh, you know, they had far inferior forces to to um, Flush's Japanese that were there, but uh, since they they used their treachery. It forced them all to retreat here. Luckily, uh, Cowboy didn't have the, the route card as well because he could have destroyed those forces that retreated. So there's a healthy stack of Japanese here, but Flush lost this large city, which will definitely hurt him if he wants to continue producing and, and continue pressing the assault. Um, one thing, and I forgot to even calculate this before, Flush should have quite a bit more money for his Japanese. His unit, his new unit should have been half cost because of his democracy. That's the flip side to it. If someone attacks you in your democracy, people rally around the, the war effort. I think it's based on uh, World War II. And um, it makes your, your things much cheaper. Um, not a lot else Flush could, or Cowboy could do though, he, for, the, for his maneuver action. He's got these, these forces here, these guys not really, but um, these guys here, he can't really shift anything else around, and he doesn't feel like he can really attack them. Um, I guess he could have shifted the whole stack, like he shifted those, but he got more resources out of this. Um, so moving these guys over to here wouldn't have really done much good for him. Um, anything else to say about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's also kind of got to worry about giraffes, harappans, but not really. And the Ming have advanced, smashing the, the, the majority of the Han forces here in Shantung. Um, that is really going to make Cowboy think hard about whether or not he wants to try to hold on to the Han. I mean, they're, they're useful in keeping uh, the Japanese from getting points, but they're really going to start not doing a lot for him. And how much can he, how long can he really hold on? How long can he even keep the Japanese from those points? He's just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting decision he has to make. So I got a, kind of got into playing. I don't know if I checked in with you for a while, but I'm, I'm done with the, the round. Um, some things I think I might not have talked about was uh, there was a disease that killed off some of the fins um, that happened. Uh, that was that was sponsored by giraffes harappans. Um, you know, she would like the Europe, the the Romans, to get be able to score more by having uh, more of Europe. Not that she needs to worry about scoring. Giraffe was our high scorer with nine points that turn. Um, Runt is is starting to fall. She doesn't she doesn't really have a a huge point score. She has some some possibilities with the Aztecs here, and these guys they're just staying strong until someone else comes into Africa. Span, Span, Spain, 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 Spanish, Spanish are coming down though. Um, what else happened? Oh, after I talked to you about this, the Mings, uh, Flush, realized Flush had a card that let him move again. And so he used them to move again, took over, has the majority of China now. That, that cost uh, Cowboy a potential point with the Han. He's probably definitely going to be wanting to get rid of them, right? Because not a lot he can do. If he doesn't even have China, all they have is the homeland, and you know it's it's conceivable that he even loses that, and it starts to become a liability to hold on to the Han. We'll see what he does next time. We'll see what everyone else does next time as well on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, seven by seven ages.